In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make a win to arrow point. It's also called the Redding Side Notch. Now, this is an arrow point that was made in Northern California, by the, most notably by the win to people. Uh, and this is a bit more exquisite and going to require a higher degree of skill than the other arrow points I've shown you how to make. So let's get started. Now, these points are almost always made out of obsidian. So here I've got a nice flake of obsidian. It's got a thin area here as the, as the flake feathered out, and we have a thick bulge in the, on this other end. So we're going to have to do some thickness reduction first and get this thing knocked into a preform. First thing we want to do, as with all our flakes, is edge it. Gently scrubbing that edge with the hammer stone to Work some flakes off, work into a little bit thicker portion of the stone so that we can set the edge up for some nice flake removals. First thing we want to do is set up our platform to knock some flakes in here to thin this bulge out. Now this is the side I want the flake to come off of. So I'm going to flake downward with this side facing up so that when I flip it over that bevel will be angled so that I can knock the flake off this side. Whenever you have heavy flake removals, you want to do it as soon as possible when the flake is the most massive. That way you have less chance of breaking it. I'm going to strike there on this side, drive a flake underneath. Make sure that edge is dull. Beautiful. See how that flake traveled? Took a good bit of mass off. We'll come back from this other side and drive it in another one. Didn't go as far, but that's okay. So I took those two nice flake removals off of there, but whenever you do, you thin and weaken this edge on both sides, wherever that flake was taken off. So now I need to reset these edges up, work into the stone a little bit, build up another heavy platform and send two more series of flakes across the face of this. I have another platform edge right here. Once I scrape this back and flake that off, I reveal this one here which is another good one so I can send that across that side. Then another one right on the other side too. I'm going to take my longer flake removal off first. Beauty. You can see how quickly that you'll thin the piece down when you set your edges up correctly. Don't worry and don't be scared to sacrifice a little bit of size in order to get your platforms the way they need to be. I've got another strong ridge here towards the back of this. If I can get this to flake off, I can drive that flake along that ridge and really thin this very back edge down. So, crunch into it a little bit. Short, steep flakes. And I'll just grind it. It's going to be a fairly stout blow because I want that flake to carry across that ridge. There it is. Again, you see how much mass that removed. Just one flake. That base is thinning out very quickly. It's getting nice and flat. It's looking really good. Yeah, I forgot I've got those other two. Boy, it's looking good. Now this basal edge has thinned down enough that I can clean the rest of it up with pressure. I've got a flat square edge. It's the, actually the outer rind of the obsidian. So as I've done in my previous videos, I do the zigzag technique. Using each flake removal, that, that edge as a platform for the next. Flip it over. I'm 
setting up another platform along this other edge to knock flakes onto this side. So all the flake removals I did were on this other side. I've not done any flake removals really on this other face. That's about to change. Both edges, set that edge up. Each one leaning to one side of the point. Short, steep flakes. I don't want real heavy, long flake removals. I just want these to be short and so I can work into that thicker portion and then grind that edge and get it set up for some heavy, long thinning flakes. Longest flake removal is going to be this one. Take this one off first. And halfway across. Have another one on this other side to meet it. There it went. Beauty. It's really thinning out now. Now this piece is starting to thin out to the point that I really don't want to strike it anymore. Uh, I could risk breaking it, so I'm going to finish up the rest of this point with pressure. I've got this preform shaped out pretty good. <clears throat> I'm going to start getting into the notching here real soon, but what I want to be sure of is that I want to thin this base as much as possible because the notching is the real tricky part on this point. So I'm going to work on driving some flakes into this base to really thin it down as much as possible. Edge preparation is critical here. You want to get those flakes to carry as far as they can really thin that base out. They're very difficult points to make if you don't have your base thinned out enough. You run into all kinds of failures and breaking off ears and all that so you, it's really critical to get these points as thin as you can on the base. So I've got the preform shaped. As you can see it's not completely finished. I want to actually do the notching before the point is done so that I have a little bit extra mass uh, which translates into more strength and less chance of breakage. So what I'm going to do is notch it now, a little bit earlier in the process, and then when I'm done and the notching is, is finished and I've passed that dangerous stage, then I can bring the edges in and really refine the shape of this point. So now we're going to get into the notching. This is where things get really tricky. Notching tools must be maintained and kept sharp. Here I'm filing down my notching tool so it's flat and thin. Small narrow flakes are removed at first, then more power is used to thin the edge as the notch progresses. I'm going to start changing the direction of what I'm doing here instead of going in. I'm going to Turn that notch, start turning it up. Flaking gently. Cr 
punch that edge down, flip it over, and push him and down. There we go. getting tight in there so I'm actually gonna come at it from the top like this this notch is working better flip it over push in and down Now I need to start turning that notch up, so changing the direction of it. Carefully black back flaking like this. Now instead of going in with my angle, I'm going to start going up. tricky in here. More. I'm going to turn these notches up just a bit more. There's the wind two point notch that looks kind of funny because it's sort of clunky still. But now we'll bring in those edges and refine the shape. Now that the most dangerous part, the notching, is done, we can go ahead and refine and shape this point. You don't want to let your guard down though because it still can be broken. You can still snap it in half. So, so be very careful with it. I'm using a sharp flat flaker so I can concentrate my force you don't want to use a dull flaker at any point during the finishing stages So there's the finished wind two point. Well, that's a nice one too. Really cool shaped notches and it's got that Eiffel Tower kind of tip where it just comes in and becomes real sharp and needle, needle pointed. Turned out really well. I'm really happy with this one. So really practice with your notch and you've got to keep your tools in order and do a lot of practicing on waste flakes and whatnot so you can learn to get those notches to go in really narrow and then expand as they turn up so that's it here's a set of three matching wind two points they're wickedly sharp and are an exquisite example of the skill of the wind two hunters of northern california <laughs>